1939, Germany made the first invasion of World War II on Poland. This gave them ample war prisoners. The Nazi party began human experimentation, exploring the limitations of the human body and trying to form the perfect race. The information gained from them provided huge medical advances, many of which are still used today. Brooke K. Cohen says following World War II, leading Nazi doctors were brought to justice before the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg. Twenty doctors were charged with war crimes and crimes against humanity. The Nuremberg trial of the doctors revealed evidence of sadistic human experiments conducted at Dachau, Auschwitz, Buchenwald, and Sachsen concentration camps. Cohen says our society must face the reality of the murders those doctors disguised as research. Dr. Karl Berndt, Hitler's personal physician, was appointed Reich Commissioner for Sanitation and Health, ranked as the highest Reich authority in August of 1944. He was authorized to issue instructions to the medical organizations of the government, to the party, and the armed forces in the field of health. He participated in the euthanasia program, which involved the systematic execution of the aged, insane, incurably ill, or deformed children by gas of lethal injections in nursing homes, hospitals, and asylums. During the freezing water experiments, prisoners were held in tanks of ice water for hours at a time. More often than not, they froze to death. They did this experiment to see how long their fighter pilots could survive in the waters of the North Sea after being downed by an enemy. Dr. Sigmund Rasker performed ice water experiments on some 300 prisoners at Dachau. 80 to 90 of them died as a result. The high altitude experiments were also performed by Dr. Rasker at Dachau. His goal was to determine the best means of rescuing pilots from the perils of high altitude when they abandoned craft. He used decompression chambers to do these experiments on 200 prisoners. 80 died from these experiments and the rest were executed. It is said that Dr. Rasher would dissect the victims' brains while they were still alive to prove that altitude sickness was a result of air bubbles in the blood vessels. Seawater experiments were performed on 90 gypsy prisoners by Dr. Hans Ippinger. The experiment was meant to determine if a human being could live on seawater as their only liquid for more than a week. The victims became so dehydrated that they were caught licking the floor after it was mopped. Rasher was ordered to make a blood coagulant to administer to soldiers before they were dispatched. He tested his patented coagulant by observing the rate of blood drops that would ooze from freshly cut amputation stumps of the living and conscious prisoners at Dachau. Joseph Mengel was the chief provider of the gas chambers. When it was reported that one block was infected with lice, Mengel solved the problem by gassing all of the 750 women assigned to it. Mengel did a number of medical experiments of unspeakable horror at Auschwitz using twins. The twin experiments were the most well-known Nazi medical experiment. They were performed at Auschwitz by Dr. Joseph Mengel. His goal was to help the Aryan race multiply in greater numbers and eventually to repopulate the world with Germans. 1,000 pairs of twins were used, and about 200 pairs survived. At Auschwitz, Professor Karl Kohlberg injected chemical substances into wombs of thousands of Jewish and Gypsy women. The sterilization experiments were some of the most well-known. Baruch Cohen states, thousands of inmates had their genitals mutilated in order to discover cheap methods of sterilization. 
the Nazis hoped that these methods could ultimately be applied to millions of unwanted prisoners. At Auschwitz, women were sterilized by injections of caustic substances into their cerevix or uterus. This caused inflamed ovaries, horrible pain, bleeding, and stomach spasms. Men had their testicles exposed to large amounts of radiation and then were castrated. Although the data is morally tainted and soaked with the blood of its victims, one cannot escape confronting the dreaded possibility that perhaps the doctors at Dachau actually learned something that today could help save lives or benefit society. You can't think about contemporary issues of the medical ethics outside the shadow of the Holocaust, said Dr. Arthur Kalpan, director of the Center of Biomedical Ethics at the University of Minnesota and the chief organizer of the conference. Cohen says this is forcing people to confront the evil wrought by medicine. In recent years, at the United States Penitentiary in Atlanta, the U Illinois State Penitentiary, and New Jersey State Reformatory, some 800 convicts volunteer to be infected with malaria so medical men can study the disease. The experiments, who are directed by the Office of Scientific Research and Development, have found prison life ideal for controlled laboratory work with humans. Their subjects all eat the same food, sleep the same hours, and are never far away. The prisoners are not pardoned or paroled for submitting to infection. Prison malaria experiments underline the fact that malaria is still a very serious medical problem. In the United States, there are one million cases a year. Children waiting for the day they feel 